It's May 17th, 2020. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 554. And it's another one of those shows. Uh, I, I wish I had. Uh, oh, uh, maybe maybe this this would work. <laughs> so, it's a, another hostful news update. I suppose we haven't we haven't didn't done one of those specifically before, lately, but. Mm-hmm. But Gary. Since your current, uh, your 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 latest job, mm. and the current situation in this world, something <laughs> odd had to come up on your radar, right? Well, okay. So interesting. I, I posted about this in our related Telegram to something chat. we enjoy. Yeah. Um, so I thought, you know, we should probably just have a discussion about it, clear the air for folks. Uh, and if the title of the show doesn't grab you enough, I don't know what will. Um, <laughs> I was like, can we be cutesy about this? And I was like, no, just call it what it is. <laughs> Spell it out. <laughs> Spell it out. Uh, also, hopefully I didn't accidentally break the stream, but anyways, moving on. Okay. Um, so the reason it's called COVID-19 and semen is um, recently, about 10 days ago, a week and a half ago, a small study out of China reported that the SARS-CoV-2, also known as COVID-19, uh, that the virus uh, particulates, we'll put it that way, were found in the semen of men that were diagnosed with COVID-19. So the, really the question is, what does this mean for ICS individuals having contact with semen? Um, you, I was going to put MSM, but that. the reality... What's that? Please define ICS. I did. Individuals having contact with semen. Did you say that? Boom, boom, boom. But you did say that on the show. I just did a second ago. I said it twice now that you asked me to say it again. Oh, my God. I didn't okay. hear it. <laughs> I don't That's know. okay. Not. It's a made-up definition. Before everybody starts running to the great Google machine and being like, I've never heard of this before. Well, probably because I had to make it up because I was going to say MSM. Mm-hmm. But that's not fair. It's not only men that, you know, have sex with men that come into contact with semen. <laughs> Sometimes you <know>. women do. <laughs> Imagine Sometimes that. Doc- Sometimes doctors do. Oh. <laughs> He's the doctor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's a proctologist. <laughs> oh, my. Or a urologist. Um, that might be more apropos. Yeah. Oh. So... When, when this, uh, you know, hit the radar a week and a half ago, I, I put a post in Telegram and it made me very uncomfortable and very nervous because, um, I'll say this first, TLDR, it has not been shown in, and there hasn't been any studies, so there is no proof that coming into contact with semen um, by having it in your body from another individual that has had COVID-19 that you will contract Mm -hmm. the coronavirus. It has not been proven the other direction. It's, it's a, it's a net zero. There's nothing in one direction or the other, other Uh than to say, and there will be three links um, to this particular show, like a subject matter. So, um, the study out of China, um, was, 38 COVID-19 patients at the Shenkui Municipal Hospital um, that provided the samples. I like who say, who provided samples? Which basically means they had to jack off. Let's be real. I mean. Right. Yeah. So. You don't really get, I mean, I mean, you technically don't get semen any other. I mean, you could, I guess. But wait, I don't. No, no, no. You usually can only get semen that way. Like, right. The, the body has to manufacture it. Yeah. So even if, even if they had, um, wet dreams 
mm-hmm. like uh, nocturnal emissions. There'd have to be a collection of the specimen, anyways. Like, so it's just yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> over over three dozen dudes had to jack off. Of them, six uh, men are the ones that they found the COVID nineteen in the semen. Four were still infected. Two were recovering. Um, so when you look at it just purely from that, then in theory, 32 of them were negative and there's no absolutation absolution, uh, as to what the differential is. So the other thing that's important though, is for people to know that, um, infectious viruses can commonly be found in semen. Mm -hmm. So like Zika and, what Chinese researchers noted, 27 different uh, viruses can have been detected in it. So this is not an unexpected outcome. Yeah. And if I'm remembering correctly in the article, Gary, they it, this was like while they were patients at the hospital, while they were still mm-hmm. like, yeah, so this was so, you know, this is while they're being treated or have been diagnosed recently with the virus right that's the kind of that's something to put in there so as one of the doctors um said uh dr greg poland who's the director of the vaccine research group at the mayo clinic in rochester minnesota geez i wonder where that is uh-huh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> poland said uh to him it raises a warning um now we have to attend to that warning and do the research which basically means oh now that we know that it could be found in semen, there's a whole other, like, not field of study, but work to be done. Um, also, the article mm-hmm. references that there was another study done, um, which uh, I've put a link to, that there was no evidence of SARS-CoV-2 semen in males that were recovering. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, people would say, oh, well, this is a conflict, you know, like, like it, it says it isn't there and it says it is there. And it's like, well, yeah. in the other article, it explains that um, COVID-19 was not detected in the semen of patients recovering for COVID-19 one month after diagnosis. Mm-hmm. So what well, it most likely means is that you have to go from infectious to uh, immune so the immune system has to take care of the antigens and, ter- and create mm-hmm. antibodies. So if you were to become reinfected, the immune system knows how to fight it. That's the concept of how our immune system works for viruses. Mm-hmm. However, like we don't have any, like, cause it's, it's a novel coronavirus. Like we, novel means new, yeah. like it's something we just don't know a whole lot about. So the reality is, I, I mean, I brought this up at work. I was like, so now in our STI clinic, like, is that something we add to our, like, questionnaire of things? Like, do we actually say to people, um, have you ever been in mm-hmm. contact with someone who had COVID? Mm-hmm. Will people even know how to answer that question? That's a good question. And I'm kind of very, I'm very, I'm actually trying to wrap my head around it because it's, it's so, like, my head starts going around like HIPAA and all those kind of things where like, can you, you know, ask questions about person, people's mental, you know, um, physical health, you know, if they've had the virus, if they've had something beforehand, because considering the situation that we're in, um, it's a fair question. You know, it's still active. We don't have a cure. We don't have a, you know, a vaccine or anything along those lines. Um, we know that people can be can have it and not have any symptoms. They can be asymptomatic, so it's entirely possible they could be they they may not know. And then the person that if you're playing with someone, which we can talk about that in a minute, but you know if you happen to be playing with someone and you know they don't know and you don't know and mm-hmm. you swallowed her baby batter as it were um or whatever there might be a problem there might be an issue because we don't like you're saying it's kind of a conflict or you know a month later 
they don't have it. But within, I would say, what is we've to, we know it's fourteen days that it can until you're infected. So uh, basically, um, once you have an exposure to COVID nineteen, then the body has a window before it will show up positive on a test. That's mm-hmm. usually in the very early stage where the virus is replicating within the body. But there is yep. so little of it that it will not produce a, you know, a reactive result or a positive result on a test. So that window before you will show a positive isn't fully known. Now, we normally rely mm-hmm. on symptoms, and that could be anywhere between two days after infection to 14 days. Mm-hmm. And on mm. average, it's around five days when symptoms first begin to appear for people. Okay. So like, there's there's like a, a two-week window, minus two days, basically. But within those 12 days, let's say, it's usually around three days in after, you know, the first two aren't counted. We get to that fifth day kind of thing that we see, oh... This is where symptoms start to appear. When symptoms start to appear is usually when you're acute, meaning like you have such a high viral load at that moment that it's mm-hmm. overwhelming the body's immune system, which is causing you to have a fever, to have shortness of breath, to have a, a persistent dry cough. Like, um, And now the CDC over the past couple of months has added more things to it, um, which is not necessarily helpful because what I think is being slowly discovered is that everybody's body reacts differently. So diarrhea, as an example, is one symptom, but it's not considered a main symptom because it isn't consistent across all people where the fever, the cough and the shortness of breath are the big three. Like pretty much everybody who has COVID-19 has one of those, if not two of those or all three, and then some other underlying things. So it it's a little challenging because like I was explaining to some people through my job when you talk to the public and they're concerned about, you know, if if they're in what we call quarantine, which means they have been in, in contact with someone who is a known positive. So they're to spend 14 days at home only with their household mm-hmm. and not go anywhere. And that's to limit any potential spread if they become symptomatic and people get nervous. And I try explaining to them, the closer you get to the end of the 14 days, the less likely it is that you're going to be symptomatic based mm-hmm. on kind of a, a bell curve um, of when most people get, you know, symptomatic versus not. And the key issue is your body is the one that determines that. I can't I can't tell you what's going to happen. If you are a relatively yeah. healthy person who takes care of themselves, that eats well, drinks lots of water, gets plenty of rest, exercises regularly, like you name it, all the stuff that we're told that we're to do for longevity mm-hmm. and health. If you do those things, then your body probably has a really well-attuned system. And you probably don't have what we call comorbidities, like things that already exist that compromise your overall health. So Mm -hmm. you don't have diabetes. You don't have cardiovascular issues, you know, heart disease, hypertension, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So there's a possibility you may not have those things. So you're it's less likely for you to get infected. Right. But if you have those things, then it wouldn't be surprising if your immune system is suppressed enough that you get symptomatic earlier. Mm -hmm. So the reality is like we we don't know where within the window any of this stuff really comes up. And Mm -hmm. these are really small scale studies. And um, I want to say something kind of important. So in the one article from WebMD, um, Dr. Amish uh, Adlaja, a senior scholar from John Hopkins Center uh, for Health Security in Baltimore, um, he is also kind of quoted in this. And basically, um, he had said, we know the virus is transmitted efficiently through the respiratory route, and we have not seen any documented cases of sexual transmission. Therefore, this may not necessarily represent a proof of sexual transmissibility via male genital tract. So hmm. the reason why this isn't huge news everywhere is because we just don't really have any proof. Yeah. Um, contact surface, aerosolization, droplets, those are the big things that we're kind of focusing on. Mm-hmm. That's why you wear a mask. That's why you clean all your surfaces. That's why you wash your hands for a minimum of 20 seconds, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. That's why so, we're doing all those things. Or you should be doing all those things. Right. So... You know, uh, Poland, who I said earlier, 
um, noted that the new study relies on testing that only detects traces of genetic material from the coronavirus. So that's a key thing. This particular study was looking for any genetic like pickup of COVID-19. Well, that means like as we've been finding, once you are positive and then most likely have been symptomatic, you go for a period where you will still come up positive on a test until the body has crossed that threshold where it's no longer antigens and now your body has antibodies. Hmm. And so you will go from positive testing, as we say, to negative testing. Negative testing mm-hmm. is where you now have built up enough that your immune system can suppress it in theory mm-hmm. if you were to become infected again. Now, the reason why I keep saying in theory is we have – technically no proof of reinfection that being yeah. said in the past week in the past 48 hours actually i think there was an article that i think four or six navy officers on uh, i want to say it's the uss theodore which was parked out next to guam uh basically that was the ship the navy ship that had all the cases the captain mm-hmm. got fired or blah, blah, all that shit right well basically they got as many of the, the officers, you know, the Navy uh, folk off of the ship in, into the island to keep them from being in close quarters from each other. And they've been slowly bringing them back. And four of them have come up positive again after having already been positive before. Mm-hmm. So you may have seen something similar happen, I think, in South Korea, um, yeah. where they said, you know, that some people were reinfected. Um, mm-hmm. The issue is we haven't proven it's actual reinfection. So mm. the fact that people become symptomatic a second time and they come up positive a second time doesn't necessarily mean that they're reinfected. It could be that um, – their body suppressed enough of it for a period of time that they felt better. I don't know if we've had any proof that they actually tested negative mm. and then they went back to positive. Like they were positive, then negative, then positive. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that's like this big mystery kind of thing is like whether or not reinfection can really happen. Mm. And I get that people are, you know, frustrated and they want more out of science, but science takes time. Like, yeah. I've tried telling coworkers, I'm like, you know, I'm entering into the field of HIV. We've been working on this shit for like 40 years. Fair. Like, so we know a lot about that. We know about viral load. We know like how to test specifically for certain strains. Like we understand a lot of stuff about it because we've had a lot of time to study it. Um, But we don't have that. Like we're what, six months maybe um, (laughs) into really kind of working and studying on this thing. And so it's, it's all very much kind of a mystery. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, it, and one of the things, uh, like uh, Dr. Poland in that WebMD article, uh, had mentioned uh, that there's different times where the, the virus is infectious, actually infectious. And mm-hmm. he, he, the last quote of the article, it doesn't tell you that it's a whole viable infectious virus. If I grind up the virus and perform the test, it would be positive, even though vi- the virus is, has no infectious potential. Basically, right. if they're because they're looking for the DNA of the virus, that the virus could already be dead. It's just you know basically almost like is it, it being found in the semen. It's just it somehow got the that essential essentially waste of the virus the dead virus was being flushed from the system but through semen instead of like urine or stool or anything so Mm -hmm. so that's a another thing about the it it, it's one of those things where this is really uh, about the discovery of it being found and now we need a test Mm -hmm. to determine oh Hey, there was some indication that there was the virus. The virus was in semen. Mm-hmm. Is this is this a possible transmissible route? That's mm-hmm. the question. We just don't have the answer right now, right? Mm-hmm. Because just testing yeah. for the DNA doesn't necessarily mean that it's quote unquote live DNA. 
uh, and transmittable. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's it's right. still up in the air. It's not saying that it is, and it's not saying it isn't. It's just right. Eh. So, and I want to get to what you were going to say uh, in a moment, Damon, earlier. But so from the CDC, I also put in a link about because there's a couple of questions on their website about transmission for COVID-19. Um, and there is one specific question that actually says which bodily fluids can spread infection. Um, so it goes on to explain that the SARS-CoV-2 RNA has been detected in upper and lower respiratory tract specimens. Um, and it goes on from there explaining about, like, you know, how some patients could have pneumonia 15 days after onset, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. When viable infectious SARS-CoV has been isolated in respiratory blood, urine, and stool specimens, viable infectious MERS, uh, also known as MRSA, um, has only been isolated from respiratory tract specimens. It is not yet known whether or not um, non-respiratory bodily fluids from an infected person, including vomit, urine, breast milk, or semen, can contain viable infectious SARS-CoV-2. Mm. So while we know that SARS and MERS... For MRSA, both can be in those uh, in some of those fluids. It's not proven that it's been in, um, you know, those ones that I just listed yeah. off, including semen. Yeah. So, here's the big question: Can you or can you not suck a dick, <laughs> whether you swallow or don't? Like, what's the probability? We don't know. We just yeah. don't, and. As a person who really likes that activity, I am very <laughs> like annoyed and displeased and frustrated <laughs> because. Like, and, I, and to be fair, that for those people who enjoy those activities, usually, maybe not all the time, but usually, you, you do other activities which still would possibly cause transmission of of the virus anyways so well right i mean that like this is one of the things i've tried explaining to some folks is um most of the time msm do not limit themselves to just uh anal reception or oral reception like they can but like it's specific to the individuals so mm -hmm. Um, there can be kissing, uh, you know, there can be fraudage. I mean, there can be, um, you know, uh, jacking off. I mean, like there, there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's other things that could happen and, you know, does one or both individuals, um, have, you know, a pre ejaculate, like if there's a bunch of pre-cum, like, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Um, mm -hmm. so we, we really kind of don't have a whole lot of answers at the moment. Um, and I think the, the thing that probably has weighed the most on me is the anonymity factor of MSM. Yeah. Like if I'm to hook up with somebody and I know them and I know I can have a conversation with them and I can trust their, the things that they tell me in their answers, um, they could be fuck buddies they could be my partner. They could be part of my polycule. They could be um, the neighbor that I have a regular thing with on the side. You know, um, <laughs> they. Well, they could be, uh, you know, the daddy that always needs relief once a week on Friday afternoons mm -hmm. during lunch. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's a possibility that you can build some strong relationships with people who are not fully anonymous. Um, that are kind of the in-between yeah. and you kind of in a way you have to make your own judgment call on that um, and and then go from there it's it's similar and attract to HIV that if you have that conversation with that person or actually about all STIs you know you got any issues going sure. on like when was the last time you like got a checkup like you know yeah. has there been any you know strange smells odd ejaculate burning sensations like <laughs> i hate to say it but it's like i've been learning some things and i'm like nasty just that's nasty. <laughs> um and you kind of know <laughs> you, at least you think you kind of know you know when what somebody you know? i know when some when sometimes you could be like that i'm sorry that's affected 
No. <laughs> that ain't happening. They don't look right. Like Back. we we could take a shower Back. and no. Like <laughs> I could I could dip I could I could dip and soak your dick in bleach. No. Ow. Like Ow. just Ow. <laughs> right. <laughs> like oh. <laughs> my point is like and don't do that at home, people. Please don't. Yeah, um, please don't. Please don't it, try that at home. <laughs> yeah. Like the, my point is is like, you know, it'll just it's not possible. You really need to have something treated. Um, and most, honestly, most STIs can be treated. Um, you know, we mostly talk about HIV as like kind of the big one because that one does not have a vaccine or a cure. Mm-hmm. And while we can take medicines to get us to U equals U, you know, um, undetectable equals, you know, untransmissible, which is huge, uh-huh. it still yeah. doesn't um, stop it. Yeah. So, and that's, and that's kind of the thing I think right now, especially that people need to, you know, make honest decisions about herself. I mean, we just had a um, podcast a couple of weeks ago with Mr. Uh, Mr. Edward Angeline Cook. Hey, Ed. Um, and, you know, there's talk about like during this time, like having sex and being intimate with people during this you know, time of uncertainty, for lack of a better phrase. Um, so you have to make those decisions, those honest decisions yourself, you know, how much of, I'm going to say this is kind of, how much of a risk are you willing to take? Mm -hmm. You know, do you want to vet out your playmates a little bit more to make sure that you're safe and, and, or do you want to go all whole hog and just like throw up a add on we don't have Craigslist anymore. But you know <laughs> Twitter. Don't list Twitter, whatever, like open for business. Like if you want to do all that, then that's your, you know the and, risk and, you're gonna be taking. And, and and I'll be honest with you, like it's it's a real struggle because like I saw someone I follow on Twitter who had just posted, I think in the past twenty four hours, when this is over, who's sending me the invite to the bareback orgy in and then fill in the blank region. Like uh-huh. they name they name where they live. There's a part of me that understands that. Like the longer this goes, even though some counties slash states slash regions are mm-hmm. like going back to being open, quote unquote, businesses mm-hmm. are, you know, allowed Slowly to operate. Up. Mm-hmm. Some with mitigation, community mitigation, like spread, you know, things in place. Others oh, not. Um it doesn't mean that like we're beyond this by any means. So mm-hmm. there's a part yeah. of me that understands like the crave, the desire, the the want, the need for that like affirmation through sex to like that yes, you exist and you're desirable and mm-hmm. you know, um you wanna be dominated or to dominate someone else, you know, through mm-hmm. um through that and and so i i understand all of that there, it's not lost on me there's a part of me that's like hell yeah like i understand i'm i'm right there with you but then there's the other part of me that especially with my job and everything i know and i'm like oh but <sighs> like i'm not gonna pass judgment on them i'm just it like yeah. i have a i have a big pause because i just don't know like if say this this activity does take place Mm-hmm. And there is a group sex scene. Is everybody safe? Will they be safe? And how do you go about that? And there really isn't a known factor or a known yeah. way, honestly, other than, and I'm just going to talk about this briefly because I don't have all the facts, um, that sex party that took place in New York that blew up, that everybody kind of lost their shit over, that um, apparently there was a house party slash orgy that a dj went to and spun live and the dj got dragged through the dirt for it uh briefly i don't know if you guys know what i'm talking about and he had said or what was revealed was supposedly all the individuals that were involved were already had been positive Mm. so the theory was if i if i take this to its end point the theory is all the individuals that were participating in the sex party had already had COVID-19 and were recovered. So therefore they could within their own grouping, have sex with each other without fear or concern of infecting anybody else. Mm. That being said, the DJ was not 
technically a person who had been, I think, recovered from COVID-19. That part I don't know for certain. Um, he got he got dragged for a lot of stuff because people were like, bitch, you could have done it virtually. Your your ass didn't need to be there. Supposedly he got a blowjob while he was like spinning. Like, I mean, just <laughs> gay drama. Yay. Yeah. Drama. But it like it, it really kind of made sense to me. And it made me think back to like, you know, there was a time when individuals who are um HIV positive felt that they could only have sex with people who were positive. Because one, mm-hmm. people didn't want to have sex with them because they were positive, and two, they thought it mm-hmm. was less risk to yeah. have sex with another positive person. What they did not know initially for a while was that actually you y'all could have different strains mm-hmm. of HIV, which can complicate things. Mm-hmm. Because if you are okay with your current viral load and you have like this mutation of HIV and then you have sex with another person and they introduce this other one, like you could take some back steps because now you mm-hmm. become infected with a different strain. Um, and I, I'm not really going to get too much more into that, but the, the reality is that complicates things. So yeah. we don't know that that's possible right now with, with COVID-19. Um, luckily, the the virus is new enough that we don't think it's mutated to that point that you can have different strains String. that complicate mm-hmm. or you know join forces and then become like a superbug or whatever. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. a lack of a better like way to phrase it, yeah. so I don't know. Like, I, yeah, I, yeah, and and I can I kind of feel that way too. You know, one of the things in the kink community, especially, there's this thing called RAC, which is risk aware consensual kink. Um, R-A-C-K and it is a for a lot of people it's a very big deal because it is essentially you are understanding and respecting the risk of the activity that you are doing and you are consenting to the activities that you do because you are aware get where I'm going at of the the what could potentially what are the worst case scenarios um, what could potentially happen you know um, to kind of get a general example, um, there's um, flogging. I'll just use our whips. I'll use whips as an example. Whips tend to leave marks. Mm-hmm. Whips tend to draw blood, depending on how sharp it gets on the skin. Right. You are essentially, when you agree to be whipped or are doing the whipping, you are agreeing to um, allow that to happen in the scene. Now, depending on you know what you agree on determines what how far you go. Like, are you is your back going to be a bloody you know marked up mess? If you are willing to go that far, then that's what you and your the partner that you're doing this with are consenting to do. Mm-hmm. If you want to go to the point of when you draw blood because you don't always have to that's when you stop like that's kind of the consented agreed upon you know situation right um covid and this kind of situation i think is is going to i don't want to say drastically change but it's gonna to me rewind some of those issues in the 80s and 90s with guard with regards to you know, HIV, it's going to have that, I don't want to say that major impact, but it's going to have people thinking and hopefully talking and respecting each other enough to discuss, you know, infections, our potential, or how, how much of a risk, how far they're willing to go. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I'm fine with just, like, you come over and we watch, a, we stick a porn in the, you know, in the DVD, which no one has anymore. Um, and we just jack off together. You know, maybe we touch shoulders or um, we like touch each other's bodies, but nothing beyond that. And then we take a shower and then, you know, we're done kind of thing. Like a very intelligent, concise, you know, idea of what you want to do. Right. And I mean, and here's a, a, a secondary thing to think about that wasn't necessarily the point of this show this topic was per the cdc um you can look it up online you know the question is is the virus that causes COVID 19 found in feces otherwise known as your stool and the answer mm-hmm. is yes 
it has been found. Um, that was at least a good month ago, I want to say, when that was first discovered. Um, people kind of got a little like worried about that. Um, but the 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 think on that, the idea, is that the risk is pretty low based on data from previous outbreaks of diseases caused by coronaviruses. So SARS and MERS, um, it's relatively low incidence that it's possible to get those infections, a coronavirus infection mm -hmm. from stool. The reason why I'm talking about it is because, you know, when you have sex with another person, there may be times that you eat ass, uh, that you, you know, probe ass with, you know, a toy, mm -hmm. with your fingers, with your tongue, with your dick. Like, <laughs> so, and I'm not trying to be nasty about it. I'm not talking about brown hanky business here. <laughs> like, you could be a responsible individual who knows that you're going to engage in these activities and you clean yourself. <laughs> but we don't have a valid testing proof method of mm -hmm. being clean. Like, you know, the, the saying goes that if you're going to bottom and you're going to clean yourself out, like, you do it until the water's clear. Well, that's fine. Um, the reality is when you take it that far, you're going pretty far in terms of like cleanliness to your colon. Um, and for probably the umpteenth time in the whole history of this podcast existing, please, 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 please do not use douches. Um, <laughs> they're not meant for that. Mm -hmm. Like the the, if, the ones that you find like the fleets, right? Like, they're they're yes, it's technically an anal douche, but it is meant for medical reasons, not for you yeah. getting railed. Yeah, believe it yeah. or not. The, um, <laughs> yeah, the 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 solution in the in the douche itself is usually a um, it has if I remember correctly because I'm going back to some like what's the safe word knowledge it actually has a laxative or some kind of uh mm -hmm. of loosening of stool in it correct it is a it is a you know in there so it is meant to get you know loosened the stool but it also may cause more stool to be loosened than you want at the well, time right it, so it has a stimulant you know laxative effect to it like there's chemicals in it but also it could help clear out some of your flora, as we say. So, like, your your mm -hmm. colon has good and not so good bacteria, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, you know, if you're going to douche, it's preferable that you just use water. You don't yeah. have to use anything else. It has a neutral pH. You don't have to worry about, you know, getting crazy with it. If you, ha if you happen to live in an area with a highly chlorinated um, water, like because your local municipality wants to kill every God blessed thing that's ever existed, you know, mm -hmm. you may want to consider filtered water. Uh, I'm just as a, just saying as a general like consideration of precaution, maybe. I mean, I don't know. It just depends. Um, but yeah, I mean, so that's another whole other layer to this thing about having sex with a person. You know, it's like, um, mm hmm. You have to trust the other individual, you know, on their hygiene and their habits and, and that kind of stuff to know whether or not, you know, if, you know, you're going to have a lovely lunch of, of booty hole, whether or not, you know, <laughs> that they've been good about, you know, their, their hygiene and their health and that, you know, that's going to be fine in multiple ways. So... I think the, the most frustrating thing about all this is that we just don't have any clarity for the time mm -hmm. being um, in regards to this. And I get the disappointment behind it. Uh, the reason I wanted to talk about it was I think that some people go one of two ways. Um, when the news came out, I think some people went the direction of, ah, oh, hell, like now I can't do yeah. anything. Well, that's not technically yeah. true. But you also need to be careful about going the other direction and being like, oh, well, it was just a small study and like it doesn't, you know, there's no proof behind it, blah, blah, blah. blah. It's not likely. Uh, well, whatever. The, the not likely uh, whatever, is the danger. Dick, dick, dick. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just so. Time for a Bukaki session. <laughs> right. I mean, and, and so um, 
you just kind of have to take I hate to say it, but you need to be your own advocate in terms yeah. of your own well-being and making the decisions that you make. Um, and that's really complicated when guys just want to get off. like, yeah. And especially in terms of like not caring who they're with. Mm. Uh, the reason I say that is there's so many men who they just want to have a nut. Like, and the the identity of the individual that they're with is not that important it's more about the the interaction and the transaction honestly like yeah. i talked recently with one of my coworkers about this i said i firmly believe that for the most part on the gender spectrum if you apply the binary concept of men versus women that there's a distinction between them about sex like the the importance of it the purpose of it the function of it it's it's very different and um you know there's a whole virility thing for for um men quote unquote about you know uh being able to like have an erection to ejaculate you know there's there's a lot of stuff behind that and some people are perfectly mm -hmm. fine with being um I don't know. There's no word, good word that comes to mind. The only thing that comes to mind is like recipient, like to be the other, so to speak. Um, so, and by that, like this is broad, like categorization, but it's like the people who like who get fucked, the people who suck dick, the people who you know crave um, being able to make another person, you know, uh, ejaculate, whether it's in them, on them hear them around mm -hmm. them um yeah so i mean like the, there's just a lot of stuff at play and more often than not and i'm just as guilty i don't want anyone to think i'm <laughs> that i diagnose this <laughs> when you're in a moment like you are in the moment i don't think that often are people like psychologically breaking it down and being like like why am i enjoying this and what's going on here you know and why is this tripping my buttons no like i think most people are just like this is fun this is good you know, mm -hmm. I'm I'm totally game for this, and like you know, for a horrible misquote, you know, it's like, you know, money shot, money shot, money shot, money shot, money shot, no whammies, money shot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're just <laughs> nice. Some of you who are younger will have no idea what that was even a horrible reference to. <laughs> um, I want to say there is a new version of press your luck. <laughs> I, th well, I think I saw somewhere there was like a new version of it. Well, I know they didn't uh, bring it back in the 2000s. Yeah. But I don't know if it's uh, new. I don't know. Right or not. Hold on. If, if, if anything, uh, uh, <laughs> just just search for Press Your Luck and uh, you'll. I'm sure there's probably clips there. Yeah. It began airing in June of, 20, uh, of 2019. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was a limited summer series, and the new series is apparently going to be starting in the end of this month. A new episode, excuse me. Hosted by Elizabeth Banks and announced by Neil Ross. Yeah. Okay, then. <laughs> and now um, you know. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, <laughs> did anyone make a porn parody called Press Your Fuck? Anyways, um, <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, I mean, there's there's a there's just a lot that we we don't know, and mm -hmm. I just wanted to people kind of have like a general uh, awareness, and then you know kind of make some decisions from there. I I really I get it. I fully understand that people want things to go back to the way they were, that mm -hmm. people want to go to bathhouses. They want to, you know, have anonymous sex. They want to, um, you know, have have video game naked play parties with their friends. Mm -hmm. Everything and anything. Um, <laughs> yeah. You get it. Y'all thirsty. Well, I mean, there's, I mean, while we make fun of that, there is something to be yeah. said for, you know, the connection that you get. You know, Q's been posting... Recently, I kind of commenting about the fact that people are starved for touch. 
Mm-hmm. And that's an aspect of sex. Like that because you have an interaction with another person, while you may not be getting, um, you know, cuddled or hugged, mm-hmm. like you're still having contact with another person. And if you're a person, yeah. an individual who doesn't have a lot of that, any sexual interaction can have that. Even if you're on one side of a glory hole and someone's on the other side, like there's still some contact that's going to take place. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, the body physically reacts to that hormones, you know, um, take place. I mean, there's just, a, there's just a lot of stuff, synaptic firings in the brain. So, you know, we are very complex beings and when it comes to something that seems so not complex, uh, it could be pretty, you know, I don't want to say muddy, but yeah. just, you know, mysterious mm-hmm. about what the yeah the outcomes will be. So yeah. that's really kind of that I, I just I thought about it and I was like well I just wanted to give that info to people and then if more comes out about it then you know we can yeah. circle back around and discuss it later I Definitely. I don't expect there to be any studies with publishings anytime soon yeah um, as you know Dr. Cisco has explained when he's been on it takes a while like you have to spend months and months getting the actual study done you know, uh, started and collect the data. And then there's a whole other phase of an- analyzing the data. Mm-hmm. And what does that mean? And, you know, extrapolating, and, you know, doing all the computations and figuring out like, you know, causations and correlations and, you know, whether or not things are relevant um, and accounting for anomalies, things like that. So, you know, like we've talked about in general terms for the world that it could be up to 18 well, I don't want to say up to it, the the standard expectation is that it could be eighteen months before we have a vaccine for COVID nineteen. There is some hope that we could get it down to a year. There has been some discussion uh, in the media about it being as soon as within six months. I find that very I don't want to say questionable. It raises a big eyebrow for me. Um, is it possible? Sure. But it has never been done before. So I don't want to say mm. it's impossible. It's just not been proven. Um, there is a company out of California, I want to say. It's on the West Coast that is taking a whole different approach to developing a vaccine for COVID-19. Because most vaccines have been utilizing one particular method over and over and over again. Um where your body gets introduced to a certain segment or a certain population or whatever of the virus and you build up an immunity based Mm. off of that. That's what the vaccine really does for you. This other approach, if I recall correctly, I wish I had the article, um, is about that they're actually getting the immune system to respond to a piece of the virus so if you've mm. seen any pictures of COVID-19, um, you know that it has all these spikes around yeah. the outside of it that are kind of where the name Corona comes from the fact that it looks like a crown, um, that, like the you know mm-hmm. spikes on a crown, so to speak. And that's the whole naming thing behind that. But anyways, the idea behind this other vaccine, if I recall correctly, is that it's the, the section of the genetic code that creates the spike is what the vaccine concept is based off of, not per Mm -hmm. se the whole virus. And if you can get the immune system to respond to that specifically, not only could it necessarily be a vaccine for COVID-19, but it could be like vaccination effectively more broadly for coronaviruses. Mm -hmm. Like I say that very carefully because it's just, it's all new, it's unknown. Um, Still big old question mark. It was like, could this but be? But in principle, sounds good. Like, yeah, if it if it can be done, it's just not been done that style before. So, um, who knows? You know, and, and then we have the whole the whole next issue is let's say we get to a vaccine. Who's going to get the vaccine? Mm-hmm. Um, and where do you go from there? Because I'll be honest, when I when I have sex with somebody, I have never, ever in my ass in my in my life asked, <laughs> like, have you 
ever had, you know, measles, bumps, rubella, chickenpox. You got your shots, girl. Like, mm-hmm. have you had your vaccinations? I don't. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Everybody just needs to be chipped. No, girl. <laughs> uh, there's too much downside to that right now for me. Um, I go there. So, yeah, I mean, I. Yeah, so I mean, I get it. And that will eventually come about with HIV, too. If we prove a cure for HIV at some point, and it's a vaccination process, then will that be a part of a conversation? Like, I mean, it will no longer. Will we move from when was the last time you tested till when did you have your shot <laughs> or whatever it is? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, fair. These are. Bless you. Because I'm tight. These are. Yeah. These are, I mean, these yeah, are that's the only ones larger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, have you these ever seen Jeffrey? Questions. Yeah. It's, it's, it's seeming time. like we're returning to that time where it's like before, before you have sex or in that, that case, buy an apart, get an apartment. Uh, you would have to show your vaccination records. <laughs> I mean, whoever has that on hand anyways, but. Yeah. Actually, I don't even know where mine is now. Oh, wait. Maybe I might have. Huh. I have, I have no to think about it. it. <laughs> well, I, I have to think about it because when I went to Ghana in 2000, while I was in college, I had to get vaccinations done. And they also checked for, you know, they wanted notice of the other ones. And I had to do that when I went to, you know, for all of most of us. You're vaccinated as a child for most diseases, and then you the kept those records. Vaccine. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it's entirely possible, but you know, most of them again, you were they were done when you were you were young, so you don't may not necessarily have that record quickly on hand. You know, but. You know, it's not impossible, but you know, for the current things, I would say if it does get to that point, I would assume that you would be able to have some kind of digital or physical record confirming if we're at that point. But I don't, you know, I don't want to, right. I don't want to think too much on that because I will go, go down I, I, a rabbit I, I, hole and I'm not coming out. <laughs> yeah, I'm not coming down. I was just hole. kind I'm of like a, a, a joke about. Having <laughs> vaccination records to have sex or to get an apartment. Mm-hmm. Again, mean, if you haven't if you haven't seen Jeffrey like the movie version, I mean, there's a play version too, which is probably a little bit better. But hey, Patrick Stewart as a flaming gay interior designer, sugar daddy. I mean, that. Do I need okay, to say more? Okay. Any re- about reasons to, to watch it. It's it's a good movie, and it's spelled his name is spelled wrong, but that I I, I forgive him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just derailed the show. No, yeah. I don't know if there's really much else to say. Really. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think there's much more to do. Yeah. This is a short show, folks. But we have a topic about something. Kind of want to leave a little fud. Um, mm. You know, we don't know. They're looking into it. Based off of previous yeah. stuff. Might not be anything. It's just that yeah. they found material. Which doesn't necessarily mean that it's infectious. So They're looking into it. We, they got you covered. It'll be fine. Just do your normal precautions. You probably yeah. it just 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 you know make sure you're keeping yourself healthy in general, and you should be fine. Stay right. Calm, this is carry on. This is really what it comes down to. You have to do very specific data to determine like infectious like ability and by that i mean like you would need someone who had been positive for COVID 19 and the only exposure was through semen 
And that's very difficult. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if the individual, let's say, had coughed or touched their face and then touched their dick and then you touch their dick and then you touch your face, like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's just there's so much that can complicate the whole process. So that's why I was like, you could still have sex with people. You could know them really well. You just there's so much that you have to take into consideration. Um, and even then, there's no foolproofing. So yes. exactly. So if you if you get it after having sex with somebody, it doesn't mean that it came from their semen. Mm -hmm. It probably came from some. It's more likely to have come from a different route during that session. So be careful. I've been be touching safe. my face, scratching my beard, doing a whole bunch of things you're not supposed to do. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still feeling fine, and I'm one who's not very sociable besides, you know, this show. So. So I'm like really taking care of myself. I've got masks. Thanks to my mom. Thanks, mom. This last Mother's Day was last week, too. Um, but uh, that's the way it is. Anyways, I think that's the end. I'm not going to say, uh, because, you know, when you run out of stuff, you can't really say, uh. But anyways, there's plenty of ways to contact us. Uh, you know, stay in contact with us, you know. You can be social through many ways uh, uh, with us. You can uh, pop over to our website, CubsOutLoud.com. Shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Uh, our social media presence is located in Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube at CubsOutLoud, the appropriate place of the URL. You can socialize digitally with uh, fans, other fans of the show, in, in our entourage chat, including our sex therapist, Mr. Edward Angelini Cook, at tinyurl.com slash telegram col. In fact, an article about this popped up there, and that's what sparked the topic for the show. Another way of influencing the show. What do you know? Uh, you can find out when we're planning to do these shows, when we have them planned, at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. That's our Google calendar. You can very, uh, buy, buy various social or accoutrement at uh, Cubs Out, at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud or zazzle dot your country localization here dot co dot uk dot ca dot com dot au dot de. Um, where you can get like shirts like this comes out I don't know a t-shirt uh, you got the uh, consent is my foreplay shirt that uh, Damon is wearing the leather version I believe um, and we have like four different types of that um, maybe working on a football jersey it's very simplistic and there's only one color which kind of annoys me but you know what can you do uh, in the near future, um, but that's a, a possibility. Uh, again, that's all in Sazzle. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud um, and kind of do a subscription to, to our podcast. Uh, I mean, it's valuable. You know, a little dollar a month for all the content that we do put up. And, and the, the DR is like bonus. They don't even have to do that. Um, we also, if you want to just send us a well, one-time donation money, you don't need any merchandise or anything, you can go to paypal.me slash cups out loud and send us a one-time donation. There's also a button on our website as well. You can rate us on iTunes, subscribe to us through Google play podcast and over on Spotify. You can find me anywhere in the internet. It says box, that box, puppy box, cut box, something or other. Damon, Damon you're, you're muted. muted. There we go. Again, if you wish to get in touch with me, and I won't be muted if you reach out to me, um, you can find me as TheaterCub79 on most bear related sites, or you can find me as Pup underscore Umber on Twitter. Hey, if you would like to get in touch with me, I can pretty much be found anywhere online as GearBear73, and I just made a change today to my Twitter. <gasps> I have 
three accounts on Twitter now. Ooh. Good golly, help me. Um, all of them are GearBear73, so that's G-A-R-B-E-A-R-7-3. If you want to follow what used to be Tumblr, you add three X's. Um, not that there's anything to really follow right now, but I took the drag part and made a whole new account because the finale of the new RuPaul's Drag Race is coming soon, and I just do not want it to be spoiled while I'm busy wanting to look at peen. I'm just, I've, <laughs> I've, 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 I've reached the end of my limit. That. I am tired of being on Friday night scrolling and being like whole, whole, peen, body, biceps, beard, belly. And then I like, and then I get like six in a row of queens like talking about like, oh my God, I can't believe she went home and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, haven't seen the show yet. Sons of bitches. You're interrupting my fapping. Like, like, (laughs) get get it together, drag queen. (laughs) I'm sorry. That is not one of my kinks. I enjoy the content, but it's not a kink. So that being said, uh, so now, not that there's anything to follow on, it's Gamer 73 drag is honestly like ah. my profile that is following all the drag uh, queens. I haven't really posted anything. I'll probably only be reposting like stuff of interest. But so, yeah, that's my neuroses now. My OCD coming out. Yay. Uh, I mean, that. Say good night, everybody. Good night. Have a good night, y'all. 